kind of make a couple decisions on a couple of people that I may or may not want to be romantically connected mm -hmm. to. Well, one big question I have, and this may not even be from the psychic stuff coming yet, is if you get involved with one of those people, is that going to slow down your path of what you want to do for yourself for moving? Uh, or do you think they would say, sure, I'm game, let's go, I'm up for an adventure? Uh, one of them, definitely not. Um, one of them, maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm. Okay, so good, good to know. I'm getting a sense for either of these people. If the, I get a sense of, do they know how big your dreams are? Are you have you shown that side of you to them? Because I'm getting this calling for you to share that side of you with them, and that's going to make your decision making a lot easier. Because if you share that, or do they know? Uh, just you saying that helps me make the decision. <laughs> good. <laughs> Any information that comes forth, the intention and desire is that it's for your greatest good, your highest good, and your benefit. And you're the authority in your life. You're the one who gets to say, that doesn't feel right for right now. So I discard it or whatever. You have full freedom and right to do that. Okay. Do you have any questions? No, I just kind of want to experience it and see how it goes. Okay, cool. All right. Have you ever had a reading before? I have had readings before, yes. Oh, cool. They're all different a little bit. Yeah, definitely. All right. Awesome. Okay. So I'm going to close my eyes. You can keep yours open or closed, however you wish. Mm -hmm. Taking in a deep breath. Feeling it going all the way down to your toes and wiggling your toes. Okay. Even though you seem very joyful to me, and I'm sure you are joyful and having a lot of happiness, I'm also already feeling some pretty intense emotions. I don't know if you've had experiences of people trying to tamp you down, not liking you using your voice or things of that nature, but to me, it, it feels like a heaviness, especially around the shoulders and the throat and the chest. And it, it, I don't know if this is still ongoing or something that has been resolved recently over the, the past few years, but there, it feels like there were people or a person who they really almost wanted to keep you in a box or keep you away from other things. I definitely am getting this sense of blockage and confinement and that type of that type of experience. So, and at any point in time, if you want to talk about or share thoughts, you can or not, whatever. It, it can be a conversation back and forth if you wish. You know, that that really does resonate with me. Um, you know, both the area that you're talking about and the person um, that, and it has been resolved that he's no longer in my life. So good. I had a sense that it was resolved, but that it wasn't that long ago, perhaps. <clears throat> well, I think that um, there was one person that springs to mind that was resolved a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. but I've been working very hard in the past year to kind of identify people that I feel good or don't feel good with their energy and, and mm -hmm. trying to get people like that out of my life. So it's been mm -hmm. a bit of an ongoing process. Um, right. And, and I kind of made some decisions a few months back of, mm -hmm. you know, like I just never feel good around these couple of people. And I, mm -hmm. I'd rather spend time with people I feel great around. Mm -hmm. Yes. And oh my gosh. And even hearing you saying that and speaking about it, it's suddenly I feel all energy and life force bubbling up within <laughs> you, you saying not for me. It was like, Ooh, gives you permission to be gives you. Oh my gosh. Such freedom. Well, I acknowledge your wisdom. I know it's not always easy to tell people in whatever way that we tell them or to make a choice. I'm not going to be around these people anymore. So I acknowledge that you did that for yourself. And that is, this is confirmation. That's very positive for you. Mm, okay. Mm. Now I'm getting at, I don't know if this is you as a child or childlike feeling your inner child, or if you have children, but this delight with your next stage of life that you're in this new, as you're transitioning, honoring yourself more, dismissing and moving out people who don't energize you. I get this picture of a youthful person picking up they're either river stones or beach stones or shells. Just this delight of walking through life, finding little stones or shells that bring to light, collecting them and uh, yeah, decorating with them perhaps. Hmm. Let's see if there's anything more about that. Yeah, to me, it almost feels more like a river than, a, than an ocean, but it could be a lake. 
I, I live right near Lake Michigan oh. um, and I have all my life. And so, yeah, you know, going down to the beach is always, you know, a, a thing that definitely brings back my childhood. Um, mm. And I've recently started a new kind of work um, in addition to what I have been doing. Mm -hmm. um, and it has a lot to do with uh, folklore and myth. Mm. And, and I was very, very into that as a child. So being mm -hmm. able to do work around it is, um, you know, something that like I would have always dreamed about doing, but never been able to figure out how to do it if I hadn't met this one particular person. Yes. Oh, that just tickles me. And I, I love that you're doing that. Yes. And stories are like these, these stones and shells that you're finding and how delightful that your work can also be full of this child delight and enjoyment. Yep. Yeah. I feel like I was in a, like sort of a rut with what I was doing and finding this work has been amazing for me and, and very joyful. Mm, I love that. I love that. And I'm, uh, you'll have to share with me later. So the viewers, if they are intrigued, cause I'm sure I can already feel somebody's going to be watching it. How do I find her and do whatever she does or find out more? Because the, the folklore and the myths, to me, those are ancient magic in a way that we can have in our current lives. So if you're open to sharing your info oh, yeah. later, I'll have that in the description box. Absolutely. Yeah, that would be delightful. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to see what else there is that is to be shared with you today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm getting this image now of <clears throat> the work, the experiences you've had in your life and some of the work, official work, but really your life experiences, it feels to me that it was as if this carving out of a gourd or a canoe or something, carving out of this internal space. And even though it was not pleasant, some of it, it, it increased your capacity to hold more. It increased your capacity for joy and compassion and relating to people and who. Oh, now it's hitting me a little bit in my heart. It also, I don't know if this is currently how it works for you, but it feels that it increased your capacity to help others who are in pain in a major way in their lives. It feels like a heartache pain, but it could be a physical, like an emotional heartache, but it could also be physical as well. But your, your ability to hold someone's hand metaphorically or literally as they go through the, the heart pains of life and that you can sit with them. You can stare into their eyes. You can be with them and not shrink away from it. That that's a gift that you have that because of the things that you went through, you can do that. It, it feels that without that carving out of experiences and, you know, your own getting to the depths of your being and moments that broke your heart, you wouldn't have been able to be the the kind loving support for this other person the person who's holding their hand and and it's not even necessarily that you're telling them that you'll get through it to that person but knowing that you got through it and that you're that loving support and that you can hold the capacity for them of going through their period of time it, it almost feels like you don't even necessarily have to have words or speech that you do, your very presence as that person by their side lets them walk through that heartache and be through that heartache and come out on the other end because they know that you have a deep compassion and a deep a ability to see them and be with them. Hmm. I don't know if the current work that you do looks like that at all, but that may be it future thing as well who knows or maybe it's a personal you know people can trust you because you have this being way about you and it feels it feels quietly powerful and uh you know I'm getting shivers as all over and it feels people when you're in pain not you but people in general when we're in pain it's such a vulnerable place and, and there's a lot of people who just want us to rush through it just to get over it and be done with it or like fix it and put a bandaid on it. And it feels that you have the capacity to not force other people to move beyond the pace that they are. And you can just be with them in those most painful moments so that they can have someone who's that witness to them and that support or 
guide or however it is. Yeah, that's definitely a, a personal thing. It's not much to do with the work, um, mm -hmm. but but yeah, that's that, that's certainly been the way I've always been. Mm, that's so nice. It feels really powerful. Mm. Okay, and if there are questions or curiosities that are coming up for you, feel free at any point in time to ask. Okay. Mm, it's funny. So I'm getting a sense of turning to look at the land where you are, the animals, kind of looking at that connection for you. And then I thought I heard a dog, but um, it's my not cat. not in my ears, in your setting. Yeah. So it's funny. I feel the the animal kingdom, the the natural world is now kind of like, OK, it's our turn. We want you to talk about <laughs> us. <laughs> um, hmm. So let's see. What is there? What is that that they want to share? So this is a little bit slow emerging for me to speak as to what I'm seeing. That may mean this is going to be a process that evolves over time for you, but I'm feeling this sense of the creatures where you live, the animals, the plants, the land itself. There's this desire of seeing them as they want to be seen. And you, it, it's almost a little bit seeing them with fresh eyes. And then I get this visual of not that I don't think that you see them now accurately, but there's a depth to the way that you see them and interact with them that is going to deepen and increase. And it does feel like a veil lifting. And I'm also getting throat sensations, which to me makes me think that in one way or another, you're also going to be speaking about, yeah, the things that you're seeing and experiencing and noticing. And it might be some in your work and some in your personal life. I a little bit get the feeling like you're already connected to the land and or natural creatures because folklore and myth ha typically has a lot of them but it does feel like a like a new way of deepening into this way of seeing this way of experiencing hmm. let me see if there's anything else there okay okay hmm well so Oftentimes when I get things, these are possible paths and you can choose to take them or not. I have one client who's always like, yeah, that I don't want that, but thank you. <laughs> um, so I, a possible path that is uh, available to you, should you choose to accept it, is a writing of new myths, new myths for the modern era, new myths for blah, blah, blah. I don't know all the things that would fill in after that. New myths for world changers for sacred earth protectors. I'm not exactly sure how it will all play out. I love and value the myths and folklore as I know you do as well. And there are people who, modern people who to see things of this ancient wisdom they needed in a modern myth. And so you have the ability to write a modern myth or more than one. It, it feels to me it could be a collection but as with many things, it starts with one. Uh, and having the fun and the freedom to, to bring forth these new ways of, of using myth to be a guiding force for people who are a little bit floundering right now uh, in terms of values, identity, crisis, environmental crisis, or whatever. I don't know. Whatever the, the mission or, or calling that you feel, it feels like a myth would be a lovely way for people to engage with your wisdom and the way that you can speak it out and frame it in a context that people can really connect to and understand. Yeah, I mean, that that definitely resonates with me as well. Um, when we went into lockdown, um, I took an online storytelling class. Ooh. And it was, it was really interesting and a lot of fun. Um, and but here in Chicago, it's mostly people telling personal experience stories. That's, that's mm. kind of the community here. Mm -hmm. And I was always drawn much more to uh, the folklore and myth and the traditional storytelling. Mm -hmm. And so um, yeah, part of what I'm doing is I'm doing interviews with storytellers that tell traditional tales. Um, yeah, for a podcast. And oh. so it, it's been reigniting my desire to tell those kinds of stories. Mm-hmm. 
Mm, yeah. Okay. I love that. Yeah. And I, I love, I'm feeling it in the throat now too. So I love how you're speaking that out. And do you see the possibility at, in the future to, for listeners to have an invitation to do story writing and myth writing with you of their own personal myths? Cause that feels that that's a good possibility. Okay. That's, that's really interesting. I hadn't considered that, but uh, I like the idea. Yeah, me too. That sounds really engaging. Mm. And I don't know how well they convey it, but illustrators, there's this, I don't know if you call it a movement or what that I follow on Instagram. It's coming up soon. It's called Folktale Week. And okay. all these different illustrators will illustrate different imagery. And there's a set themes and you see people from all over the world doing their folkloric illustrations of the moon of someone with a basket or a fox or whatever. I, cause I feel the illustration could really nicely weave in and tie with what you're doing, or it might be nice to have an illustrator on the podcast. Right. Right. That's, that's a great idea. I, I need more information about that. Cause yes, I, definitely I will send that. I will send that to you and I'll, I'll put it below. I think it's called folk tale week. Okay. It, I found out about it last year and for about three weeks, my feed was just full of the most delightful cats and the moon and foxes and bears and children and witches and all kinds of really wonderful things. <laughs> oh, that sounds amazing. Yeah. Oh, good, good, good. Mm, okay. Um, hmm. uh, is there something incredibly helpful that when we left today, if you were to say to yourself, this was amazing because X, Y, Z, is there anything that's a desire within you that you want to walk away with today? Um, I don't know that there's anything specific. I'm, I'm deciding right now, uh, I, I want to move. Mm. Um, and interestingly, I want to be in a place that's a little bit more uh, secluded. And, you know, I live in a suburb now and it's mm -hmm. fine. It's great. Um, but I want to sort of live in a cabin in the woods. Yeah. Uh, and I'm trying to figure out where I'm, you know, if, if that's, that's coming for me, if that's really going to happen, because I've been looking for a while now mm -hmm. and I don't know if I'm looking in the wrong places or if I'm, if something else is meant for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not even necessarily limited to this country. Right, um, right, right. So that's kind of, I, I just, I just feel a little stuck there. Mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. mm. all right. I'm going to take a few moments. I'm so glad you asked that. Thank you for sharing. Well, it's funny. It's not, <laughs> I'm sure I will get more, but the first thing that's coming up and I'm not able to get anything else yet because I was hoping to see more, but I guess I need to say this first before more can be shown. <sighs> I get the impression you want to have one established location, but what keeps on coming out is traveling barred so that perhaps there's a period of time. I don't know if it's a van or a tiny home or whatever <laughs> with your dog, but I get this feeling of you tr for a short period of time two to six months that might not seem short but in the grand scheme of life it's short with your dog oh yeah now all the tangles are coming with your dog traveling exploring new places finding the stories oh and now I'm getting all the foresty things I'm, I'm getting this feeling for me I knew this home was the right home for me because I walked in the backyard and I saw mushrooms that I like that's one of my favorite kind of mushrooms and I was like, okay, fine. I don't care what the house inspection says, anything. I know this is my house now because I saw these mushrooms here. <laughs> and and I don't know how you feel about mushrooms, but I love I, them. okay, I had a feeling. I, I'm getting this sense of you being a witch of the woods with your basket, gathering mushrooms and that, <laughs> <laughs> that having some exploration time to visit and, and this feeling, oh yeah, I'm getting even the more tinkles of when you find it, you're going to know. And it's going to be like when you find the mushroom patch and you're like, oh, this is the spot. It, it feels that it's going to be that way. And I also see this exploring story telling, story gathering happening before that uh, until you find your place. And I do feel that if you don't want to travel around the U.S., I don't know the logistics of bringing your dog to another country, but I do feel uh, 
that Europe, I don't know why, but Romania comes up as like a really good option for you. I know they have mountains there. I don't know if you like mountains, but the I know they have more forests for sure than other countries in Europe, but, but somewhere, somewhere where you can have that secluded lifestyle. Um, and maybe it's that you explore here for a little while and someone you meet in these adventures says, oh, you know, I, I have a, a loft in my bookstore in whatever country and I, I the owner is going to be gone for two months and I really need somebody. And then you go and fall in love with it. It feels that it could be that kind of natural discovery. I don't really get the feeling that researching is the way you're going to find it. It feels like a walk in the woods of this process of discovery. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of that's, oh, that's how everything happens in my life. You know, really? I, I've rarely ever looked for a job because yeah. they just, they come. Um, when I found this place, I, it was exactly the same. It was like, yeah. I just walked in the door and went, yeah, that's the one. Yeah. And, and it was just, you know, fine. And it, um, yeah, it, it just feels like the right things come to me. Mm -hmm. And and so, you know, and, and the times that like I have looked for a job, for example, they've been terrible. Like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I love, I love that. I feel that's going to keep on being consistent for you. The things find you. And how do you feel about traveling? Is that a little bit outside of your comfort zone to travel a little bit in that kind of nomadic traveling bard kind of way for a period of time? Um, I think it depends. And I, I, I just, I need to say I have a cat, not a dog. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, but, uh, it, I, I have been thinking, I've always wanted to go to England and Scotland. Ooh. Um, and I've been thinking about and sort of getting myself somewhat organized around planning a trip for mm. some, maybe in the spring I was, I was considering that. Um, and, uh, I have, I, I feel very drawn. And so it is, you know, when I say I'm not limited to this country, that's like one of the places I've considered going to. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it would be to go see the the forests and the, you know, yes. all the haunted forests of uh, England that yes. I learned about recently through a oh. really, really cool documentary. Um, and so, so yeah, I've been talking to my friends there and kind of figuring out when that's going to be possible. I haven't traveled much in recent years because I um, developed a bunch of chemical sensitivities. Oh, and so I can relate. I yeah. mean, I don't know what yours are, but if I'm in an urban setting for too long, my eyes constantly irritated and tear up because of the pollution. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's almost everything for me. It's perfumes, mm -hmm. it's cleaning stuff. It's, mm. you know, off gassing of, right. Carpet, you know, yes. So, so yeah, it's, it, it was, it's got to be harder for me to travel. Um, but I have, I met a new allergist and oh, it's, I, I've been getting a lot better. So I think it's a lot more yeah. possible now. Yes. Oh, good. And I have a few tidbits for you. So okay. one, I'm not a medical doctor, obviously, <laughs> or a trained herbalist, but I feel when I get images, there's oftentimes multiple areas of life that the images apply to. So if you feel comfortable, I would look into detoxing with mushrooms, seeing how mushrooms can be supportive for your system. I know some have a detoxifying effect uh -huh. or that, what is it called? uh tonic effect which could right. also maybe help your body to to heal from some of this you know chemical pollution trauma and damaging so that that i think is important for you to explore on your own i don't know yet what mushroom but i feel that could be a fun rabbit hole that will help you in many ways and then here's the other thing when you're talking about the england and forests and all of this i'm loving that i'm feeling in scotland i'm feeling really good for you about that i'm getting a couple pings couple hits here about there is an opportunity, I don't know where or how, for you to have other people help fund this. I don't know if it's GoFundMe, I don't know if it's grants, like some type of, um, you know, sometimes there's grants to like preserve oral storytelling or whatever. So it, I think it, you would have to kind of take it, this and run with it and explore where it goes for you. And I feel that that's a really great opportunity to supplement your travel budget and maybe give it a little framework too, if you desire. Right, right. And, um, and who knows, maybe, yeah, maybe it's your friends and it's a GoFundMe book about forest and haunted forests and whatever, or maybe it's something else. But I definitely feel that there's either an arts or literary organization or governmental nonprofit group or community friends vibe. One of those I feel has the some funds to help contribute towards what you're doing. And okay. you know, a Patreon, I don't know if you do a Patreon for your podcast, but that's an easy way that sometimes people 
uh, offer things that then the community can support financially mm -hmm. as you do these incredible explorations. Okay. Yeah. It sounds exciting. Yeah, it really does. Also, I'm making a note. I have a friend who has gone to England a few times and she's a cool lady. So I'm going to connect you both. Are you on Instagram? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, I will connect you both on Instagram and maybe email too. I don't remember if I have her email address, but I know she, she's in Scotland right now. Okay. She, <laughs> so I'm pretty sure she would love to talk to you about it and, and see you two might have some connections that you make from this. So yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Awesome. Mm. Well, we have a few more minutes left. Do you have anything else that you want to cover or look into or, or share your own thoughts? Uh, well, I am trying to decide, uh, trying to make a couple decisions on a couple of people that I may or may not want to be romantically connected mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. So, and I just don't really know which direction to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, one big question I have, and this may not even be from the psychic stuff coming yet, is if you get involved with one of those people, is that going to slow down your path of what you want to do for yourself, for moving? Uh, or do you think they would say, sure, I'm game, let's go, I'm off for an adventure? Uh, one of them, definitely not. Um, one of them, maybe. Mm, mm. Mm, okay, so... Good, good to know. I'm getting a sense for either of these people. If the, I get a sense of, do they know how big your dreams are? Are you, have you shown that side of you to them? Cause I'm getting this calling for you to share that side of you with them. And that's going to make your decision-making a lot easier because if you share that, or do they know? Uh, just you saying that helped me make the decision. <laughs> good. <laughs> Cause I thought, I felt like one of them is going to be like, well, that's too much for me or do you think that big? I don't know. I got, yeah, that's the feeling I, I was getting to. If one of them is not able to handle all that you're becoming and all that you are. And yeah, I'm getting goosebumps and tingles all over. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. Thank you for that. I appreciate oh, it. You're welcome. You're welcome. Also, I don't know if this is a part of that, but if there's a part of you that's like, oh, but he was so cute. The guy who's a no. I, I always felt like if, if there were multiple qualities I liked in multiple people, that that's like the universe getting warmed up, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, this is good. And this is good. And yes, I would like to place my order. And this is, <laughs> I can make substitutions <laughs> <laughs> because that's the other thing I'm getting for you is freedom of choice. Woo. Oh goodness. Now I'm feeling it everywhere. <laughs> you have freedom of choice. The person that you feel you want to choose now, you can choose to be with this person. And then in six months say, this was fun. You've made my life amazing and I'm moving and you could come or not. Maybe I'm, maybe this is the end for me and thank you. I'm moving on to my new meal that is happening <laughs> in another place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So freedom of choice. Mm. It feels to me every romantic relationship, definitely. And every professional relationship, it's almost like you've gone to a point of no return in a good way. Mm -hmm. Freedom of choice will always be a major priority for you and who you involve yourself and engage with. And if they don't honor and see you for all that you are and give you the freedom to not be confined and in a box, they're not going to be in your life for long, nor do you want them. And I know you know this, but this is just that confirmation of it feels that it's like a standard that you have that will never, you'll never go below that standard again. Oh, yeah. 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 I feel that. Yeah. Oh, good. Hmm. Well, how do you feel? Was this helpful for you? Tell me a little bit about. Yeah, definitely. I, I think that a lot of it resonated. <laughs> you helped me make a decision. <laughs> um, and I, I think that it, it was all very accurate. Um, oh, and, and it, you know, it feels like you really kind of keyed in to who I am, you know, with the, the nature stuff and the folklore and, and all of it. Um, and the, you know, that I've been thinking about travel, I've been thinking about living in the woods. Um, so I, I feel like that, that you really kind of captured where I am in my life right now mm. um, and that that feels it feels good it feels 
I, I felt like, am I, am I crazy? Am I like just, you know, a little bit lost? And it sort of confirms that this path that I'm on is the right one for me. Mm -hmm. mm, hallelujah. And I definitely know you're not crazy. And this path is awesome. And I want to follow along on the path. So I'm going to have to subscribe to your podcast. Donate well, to your GoFundMe or Patreon or whatever you do and keep up with it because this sounds so delightful. Well, I'm I'm sort of writing the tales of a podcast that already existed and has been growing for years. It's called the Folklore Podcast, um, and I'm doing I'm I, I'm doing a series on uh, live storytellers, and I'm interviewing them, and I'm talking about where you know folklore traditional telling is today and their process, and it's been lots of fun. And so I am very glad to be doing that bit. I will definitely share with you the the link to the website, and you can find the podcast there. Mm -hmm. Awesome.